Okay, so you probably recognise this workbench before and this face before. This is Aaron Muppet G, or Aaron G Muppet. We've got the Muppet Manometer. And what this does is it measures, in a very mathematical kind of sense, the restriction on an airbox. So where this tube goes, it goes right here by the air intake which connects to the throttle body. We're going to suck air through it using one of these. And what happens is, as the air comes through, if there's any restriction in this air box, it will start pulling anything it can find through this tube here. And when it does that, the water will start to go up. That means the higher it is, the more restrictive it is, and the lower it is, the least restrictive it is. So at the moment, it's zeroed out. There's obviously no restriction. There's no air being pulled. So just a quick example of measuring how restrictive uh, an air box is. We're just going to pull some air through the intake. And, you know, it, it should start sucking up from zero. So Aaron, can you give me a, just a demo run on this so people can see that? There you go. All right, so that's it in action. So we can now measure how restrictive this airbox is. So we're going to start off with the first configuration. Okay, so uh, there'll be links to Aaron's channel where Aaron goes into full technical details and all kinds of configurations which he's tested on this measurement tool, the Man Muppet Manometer. In this uh, first configuration for my video though, we're just going to do something fairly simple. Um, I've actually got two intake tube snorkels or intake tubes, which I've sealed one of them off because this is most people just have one. So this is probably you at home. I have a DNA air filter. Most people have that. Uh, OEM filter. If you want to know more about that, hit up Aaron's channel. Um, I'll close the door. I do have a CB300 high airflow intake, which we'll go into that in a separate video, kind of complicate that one. But this is the measurement for just a, a one snorkel intake. No uni filters. We're going to leave those out. Aaron, what have we got, mate? Show us what we got. What we got? Okay. We're going high. Just a lick under 50, so about 48. There you go. 48 millimetres of water. So Aaron's just said something quite interesting here, that on the DNA website, they say that this is 10% better flow than the OEM one. And based on our measurements and Aaron's test with the OEM air filter, they're spot on. DNA actually do their airflow testing. Believe it or not, air filter company. Um, so, uh, yeah, spot on 10% better performance than OEM. So, what have we done now for the second test? We've added uh, the uni filter with the installation recommendations, which is stuffing it in the tube. And uh, this is still left blocked. Um, so, uh, Aaron, let's get a new measurement, mate. Have a look. So, this is on high. Yeah. Let's have a go. Whoa, okay. Holy. Wow. So that's how restrictive that is when you add it in, pushed in. And, and, the, and, and think about what we're doing here. We've just taken away all the volume of the tube. Let's just have a look at how big that hole is. Now let me remove the tube. And let's have a look at how big that hole is. So we've taken all that volume away. So that's... That's how much restriction there is there. And it just went straight off the meter. It was sucking literally water all the way into the fan almost. So that's that. Let's try something now that I believe is the better solution. All right, so we're going to put this on inverted. So this is what I recommend people do. Um, so essentially, you are exposing more foam for air to enter in and we've left the volume of the tube untampered with. So, you know, there should be less restriction 
with it just simply installed inside out. Aaron, give us a number, mate. Hello, let's go. And look at that. 60. So it's literally half, more, uh, more than half of what we actually got on the first time. So just by having them outwards instead of tucked in, heaps more flow. Yeah, heaps more flow. You're just exposing more foam to capture the air and suck it through. And you're leaving the volume of that uh, snorkel to do its intended job. Okay, so uh, in this configuration, I've unblocked the two snorkels. Uh, which is my mod, so I've doubled the air intake by adding another snorkel, essentially. So, Aaron, let's get a measurement on that, mate. Measurement. Let's go. On high. Dead on 30 millimetres of water. 30 millimetres of water, there you go. All right, let's uh, start adding these uni filters. So in this configuration, double the air intake, double the uni filter. So that should be better, right? We've stuck them in as per the recommended installation. Aaron, what have we got, mate? What have we got? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just over 90 millimetres of water. We're sucking water through straws. Right, now let's invert them. All right, so now we've got the double inverted. Let's go. Let's do it. Holy crap, 38 down from 90. Yeah, that's huge. That's, that's just massive. Yeah. Guys, do that. <laughs> so part of this video, I'm just going to chop this in at the end, is that I have the... A CB300 so this is from a CB300 and it's our high flow air filter and I'll just run across a picture on the screen now of what that looks like before it's installed in the bike but essentially I think Maverick at 550 performance sells these buying this isn't just a plug and play in fact if you have a look it's a freaking nightmare you can't just sit it flush in a bigger hole um, the way it lines up to the bike means you actually have to like create eight millimeters of extra plastic out of epoxy to get it at the right angle um, for it to sit. Uh, so that, you know, when the air filters in the bike, the mount points line up to where they need to, um, to, to, to reinstall the air box. And even so, you know, you'll actually find that this uh, mount point here won't line up with the bike anymore because it's like a few millimeters out. But that's necessary in order for that to connect properly to the throttle body. And so I guess this video is to tell you that this is a serious mod for chasing, you know, two horsepower. However, two horsepower on a 20 horsepower engine is 10% performance so make of that what you will um, I know I'm going to be keeping my bike for a long time so I've gone through the effort of doing this but this isn't this is one of the more difficult mods that I've ever had to do on the 300 and I've done pretty much all the mods that there are to do on the 300 and this is this is actually harder than installing CB300 cams uh, into the bike um, it's it's a real pain in the ass so i'm not sure if i can recommend this but i'm one of the idiots like aaron that have gone and done it <laughs> so make of that what you will um don't expect that you can buy this make a hole and then plonk it in um it's it's not that it's not like that at all uh aaron take us through you know why it's at the angle that it is and why all the bolts don't properly line up okay with this intake i found that the top so the the intake's got a bell like a high ram airflow design and to get the bell to sit inside the airbox to not restrict or not to fold the bell over you have to sort of use the the groove of the original boot it sits up the top here so you've got this little rubber i don't know it's like a a little nubbin yeah it's like a locator um nub which is you, you right at the very top and all this top part sits into the groove the bell sits in very well inside of the intake but what happens is to get the angle 
So I don't know if you can see that. The angle of the air box has to be very, very close to the angle of the flange to match up with the, the throttle body. And to get that, I found you sort of got to manipulate this area and then it leaves this gap on the bottom. So you sort of got to build it up with epoxy to get it to sit out around the eight millimeter mark to get it to, to match up. And if you have a look at the bike here, this is my one already in. Some of the ones I've seen, they don't actually, at the top here, they don't actually sit flush at the top and flush at the bottom. So they sit cocked off the actual throttle body. So for me to get it to sit flush, that's the angle I had to do. So you have Let to Let me do... just quickly grab something that might help explain. So you can see here that uh, with Aaron's uh, fitting here that it's, it's all perfectly sitting into the throttle body and it's all lined up. But that's, you know, you can see that he's had to you know, manipulate the epoxy to add surface area to extend the airbox out at the correct angle. And if we just go back to the, you know, the the mounting bolt here, you can see that there's a hole there and it doesn't line up anymore. But, you know, it's still uh, going to clear the uh, petrol tank um, here when that sits on its rubber mounts. But we're a couple of millimeters out on just one mounting bolt. So that is the hardest mod that Aaron has had to do.